Hi everyone and welcome to the Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest. This is a grade six level video and it is going to be about equations in particularly linear equations. Let's get started. In a courtyard, there are chickens and rabbits. There are 19 heads and 46 legs. How many are there of each animal, would you say? So take a second, pause this video, make sure you have an answer ready for me when we begin. You don't want your brain tricking you into thinking you know the answer. Oh, this is easy, but then secretly you don't know the answer. Brains do that sometimes. Are you ready? Let's solve this problem. Uh, well, we don't know a lot about this. We don't know how many chickens. We don't know how many rabbits. So if mathematicians, when we don't know something, we assign what we call a variable to it or a letter. Uh, so let C be the number of chickens and let R be the number of rabbits. Total of 19 heads. Well, as far as I know, every chicken I've met and every rabbit I've met has had one head exactly. So number of chickens plus number of rabbits, C plus R, must equal 19, the number of heads. There's our first equation, and it's linear. Um, there's also a total of 46 legs. What does that mean? Well, each chicken has two legs, and each rabbit has four legs. So we must have two times C, two times the number of chickens, plus four times the number of rabbits, 4R, equals 46. We've created two linear equations in the two unknowns, C and R. This is what we would call a system of linear equations if we wanted to be fancy. I keep using the word linear just to mean that we don't have, you know, chicken squared or rabbits cubed or anything like that. Um, all right. How do we proceed on finding the values C and R now that we have a system of linear equations? Well, there's many possible ways. Uh, once you get to university, there's fancy ones like matrix row reduction and all that. But really, we are simple folk here. Let's do this the simplest possible way. Let's multiply the first equation by 2. That way, we're going to have 2C plus 2R equals 2 times 19. And now we have two chickens in both of our equations. We have the same coefficient of 2, which means that if we subtract, say, the second equation from the first or the first from the second, the 2C, the two chicken term, is going to cancel each other out. Right? So let's subtract the first equation from the second, just so that we have positive rabbits rather than negative rabbits. Well, 4R minus 2R will give us 2R, and 46 minus 38 will give us 8, which means, don't everybody shout it at once, that R equals 4. We have four rabbits on our hands. How do we figure out how many chickens? Easiest thing in the world. Substitute the R equals 4 back into the first equation. That way we will get 19 minus 4, 15 chickens all in all. Excellent work. Let's try question two. The sum of three positive integers is 14. If the first increases three times and the second becomes double what it is and the third remains the same, the sum of them will become 36. Find the positive integers if none of them is a prime number. So before I let you loose on this problem, I want to clarify some things that might sound like gobbledygook. Integers are, well, positive integers are numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the counting numbers. Uh, if you don't see the word positive ever, integers would be including stuff like 0 and minus 1 and minus 2 and minus 3 and so on. We don't have that here. We only want positive integers. A prime number, I remind you, is a number that is divisible only by itself and 1 and nothing else. Right? Now that you have those pieces of information, I am letting you loose on the problem. Try it out. Find the answer. Find all three positive integers and then unpause this video and listen to the solution. All 
right. Are you ready now? Let's take it up. We know that we need three non-prime numbers. So they can't be like two, three, five, seven, eleven. Can't be any of those. Um, and we want their sum to be 14. And then we want to do some transformations to them, which hopefully means you wrote a second equation with coefficients in it. And that second equation was 36. As mentioned, if we don't know numbers, we just write letters in the place of those numbers. That's what mathematicians do. It's called assigning variables. So I chose A, B, and C to be my three positive integers. Well, the first sentence tells me that A plus B plus C equals 14. Then I have to increase the first number, or I'm just going to call it A, by 3, so 3A. Three and then the second has to be twice itself, so 2B. And C stays as it is, and the result is 36. So there is my second linear equation. Well, what do we do now? How can we solve this? Well, we can just subtract the first equation from the second. We already have a matching coefficient in our C. If we subtract the first uh, equation from the second, we will indeed have um, just all the Cs cancel out. 36 minus 14 is 22. And then 3A minus A is 2A. 2B minus B is just B. So there we are. 2A plus B equals 22. That's still not enough to solve the problem now, is it? Well. We have to solve this, and they both have to be positive integers, both a and b, right? So if we have an even number, and we're adding b to twice a number, we know some things about b. We know that b has to be even, right? Well, it's not hard to find a non-prime even number, but uh, we might want to try some cases right? B could be something, any even number as far as I know right now, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. So it looks like we're going to have to try some cases. Let's see where those cases lead us. Case one, if B is 2, um, well, let's see what happens there. That's no good. 2 is a prime number. It's divisible by 1 and it's divisible by itself, which is 2. It's the only even prime number. So that's no good. Case two, B, the next biggest thing it could be if it's even, well, that would be four. Uh, subtract, 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 22 minus four, divide by two, A would have to be nine, and C would have to be one. Are those okay for us? Well, yes, this is one solution to the system of equations. We don't consider one to be a prime number. We know nine isn't a prime number, because don't forget, it's divisible by three. Uh, is that the only solution? Let's see if there are more. How about if B is 6? Again, subtract, 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 22 minus 6, divide by 2, A would have to be 8, plug that back into A plus B plus C equals 14, C is 0, eh, C has to be a positive integer. 0 is not positive. How about if B equals 8? Uh, 22 minus 8, divide by 2, A would have to be 7, eh, A can't be a prime. Well, it sure looks like we found the only solution. We can keep going. Uh, if b equals 10, uh, then a equals 6, and we very quickly get into things where our numbers are negative, which is no good for us. So, you know, if you keep taking bigger b's, c would have to be smaller and smaller, and we'd quickly get into the negative numbers, where we're not allowed to be because we want positive integers. So the only solution is 9, 4, and 1. That'll solve our problem. All right. Uh, I want to talk to you about some Greek capital letters. That, le that thing that looks like a triangle is a Greek letter called delta. So I'm going to call this operation A delta B. You're welcome to think of it as A triangle B. Just like when we don't know numbers, we substitute letters in for them. If we don't know what to call an operation, you know, it's not quite subtraction, it's not quite multiplication, it's a whole bunch of things, we might denote it with a symbol. Sometimes we use star, sometimes we use square, sometimes we use delta with triangle. 
So without further ado, let's define the operation A delta B. It's going to be add up A and B, and then add in another B, and then add in the product A times B. So I would like you, using that definition, to solve the equation P delta X, all of that delta with three equals 222. Find X for me, please. Again, you may want to pause the video because this solution is not going to be instantaneous. Quite a bit of work ahead of you. Well, let's see. As usual, parentheses by bed mass means that we're going to be doing the brackets first, right? So what is P delta X? We apply the definition. That's going to be P plus X plus PX plus another X, right? Uh, we can simplify that a little bit just to make our life a little easier. We've got seven X's in all, X plus five, X plus X, and a lonely five in there. So that stuff in brackets simplifies to five plus seven X. Right? Uh, if we then delta that with three, what are we gonna get? Um, let's just be kind of safe here and let's apply the definition again. Uh, so now the A in our formula is going to be 5 plus 7x, and the B is going to be 3. So let's be very careful here. We don't want making any little tiny algebra mistakes. All right, uh, 5 plus 7x plus 3, add up the two numbers, plus 5 plus 7x times 3, and then plus toss in another 3 in there. Let's see what we can extricate, right? We have a 5 plus a 3 plus a 5 plus a 3. Um, we also have a, a 7x plus a 7x, so all, oh, sorry, 7x plus a 7 times 3 times x, so all together 7 plus 21, 28x, and then how many constants do we have? 5 times 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 3 is 26. So 26 plus 28x, all of that has to be equal to 222. Now we can just solve for x the old fashioned way. Subtract 26 from both sides. We will have 28x has to equal 222 minus 26, which is 196. And then divide both sides by 28 or divide both sides by four first and by seven later, whatever you prefer um, to obtain that x has to be seven. Good job if you got that answer right. That was a tough question. And that's it for today. I hope to see you in one of the classes soon. Thank you for your attention and have a great day. Bye.